Welcome to this predicted paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. The formula for the area of a rectangle is the width times the length. The width is 3 and the length is 5, therefore the area will be 15. The units of the width and the length are both centimetres, therefore the units will be centimetres squared. Whenever we multiply two negatives we always get a positive, so we know our answer will be positive. We're going to do 9 times 12 which is going to be 108 and v times v which is going to be v squared. So 55% is the same as 55 over 100 and what I can do is I can divide top and bottom of the fraction by 5 and so that is going to equal 11 over 20. Now in total there are 20 squares here because there's 5 across and 4 down, 5 times 4 is 20. And if there's 20 squares and we're looking to shade in 11 twentieths, it's just going to be 11 squares. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So to solve this, I'm going to first of all just write out the question, just to make it a bit bigger. First thing we do is put in our solving lines. So we just put a set of lines to the left and the right of the equals. And what we need to do is get the x on its own. So looking around, there's this 11 we want to get rid of, and this takeaway 5 we want to get rid of. Always get rid of the plus or the takeaway first. So we're going to focus on this minus 5. We've got to figure out what is the opposite, what's the inverse of takeaway 5. Well, the inverse is going to be plus 5. Now we can't just do that to the left hand side, we've got to do it to the right hand side as well. So we add 5 to both sides. When we add 5 to the left hand side, we're just left with the 11x. On the right hand side we do 28 plus 5 which is 33. Now we still don't have x on its own, we've got this 11 here. Now what is that 11 doing? Well that 11 is a times 11, it's multiplying x by 11. So to get rid of it we need to do the inverse of times 11, the opposite, which is divided by 11. And what we do to one side we must do to the other side. So we're going to divide 11 both sides. That will leave us just the x on the left hand side and 33 divided by 11 is 3. So the word solve means find out what x equals and we've done that. When collecting terms you've got to collect like terms so we've got 13x, we've got a 3y, now they're not like terms but the 13x is a like term to the 7x, they're both x's and the 3y is a like term to the 2y. So let's put the x's together, 13 lots of x plus 7 lots of x, and let's put the y's together, 3 lots of y plus 2 lots of y. So all together we've got 13 lots of x plus 7 lots of x, well that's going to be 20 lots of x, and for the y's we've got 3 lots of y plus 2 lots of y, that's going to be 5 lots of y. So our answer is 20x plus 5y. The lowest point on this graph is here, and that's at point 6, and the highest point is here at point 20. And we're looking for um, percentage uh, change or percentage increase, and the formula is change over original times 100. So the change between the 6 and the 20 is 14. The original, the starting point was the 6 and times by 100. 
and that gives us 233.333 blah 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 percent. And this 100 technically is 100% that we're timesing it by. So it says it wants it to the nearest percent, so that would be 233%. So the first thing we're going to do is write this as a ratio between the fractions. So we're going to have um, green to black. Now it says that um, a quarter of the counters are black and therefore the remaining counters will be green. So if a quarter are black, that leaves three quarters to be green. And what we can do here is on both sides of the ratio, all I'm gonna do is just times it by four. So I'm just gonna times four both sides. So three divided by four times four, because over four just means divided by four. So three divided by four times by four just gets rid of the fraction and 1 divided by 4 times 4 is just going to be 1. Now this might surprise some people because they will probably think it's a ratio of 4 to 1, but we can show here that it's a ratio of 3 to 1. You will need to use a paper and pencil to do this physically. Uh, you can't really do this on the computer. And make sure you have a ruler and a compass. So the first thing we're going to do is draw our 10 centimeter line. And we're going to get our compass and we're going to measure the six centimeters for the left hand side. So we're going to measure six centimeters on our compass. And we're going to just put a little arc there. We can do the same on the other side for eight centimeters. So we're going to do our eight centimeter arc from the right hand side. And we're going to put the point of the compass here. And it should be like that. And you can see where the two arcs overlap, which is here. And we can join these up with straight lines. And it says to uh, measure the angle X. So we're going to need a protractor for this bit. I'm going to put our protractor here with the crosshairs matching here. So we're going to be looking at the inside, or the outside one, and it comes up as 37 degrees. So our answer is 37 degrees. So the pass mark for the test is here, and we can see that there are two students who pass the test. So it's two students out of two, three, four, five, six, seven in total. And we want this as a percentage, so we're going to times it by 100%. So we do 2 over 7 times 100, and that gives us 28.571, blah, blah, blah. And it says it wants it to the nearest percent, so that will be 29%. To find average speed, we need to do the total distance. And then all we need to do is divide that by the total time. So in this question, the two distances are 90 kilometers and 63 kilometers. So we need to do 90 plus the 63 and divide that by the total time. So that's the five hours plus the four hours. And so that would be 153 divided by 9, which will give us 17. So the answer will be 17. The distance is in kilometres and the time is in hours, so it would be 17 kilometres per hour. To get from the length of a square to the area, we square the length. To work backwards, what we do is we square root, because the inverse of square is square root. So we've got 196, and we're going to square root it to find the length. So we work out the square root of 196, which is what number times itself is 196. And you should learn them from 1 to 15, so you should know all of the square numbers from 1 to 15. So you should know that the answer is 14. 
So the length of therefore is 14. So to work out what the perimeter is, perimeter is going to be the distance around the square. So if I draw a square out, we know that each of these uh, lengths are 14. So it's just going to be 14 times 4, which will be 56. So whenever we have a scatter graph, chances are we'll be drawing a line of best fit. And so that's what we'll start off with, draw a line of best fit in. And it says we're looking for a height of the box or an estimate of the height of the box with the width of 17. So 17 is here. So the width of 17 will be a line across. Let's try and get this just right, line across there. And what we do is we draw a line down when it hits the line of best fit. Now looking at the scale here, this seems to be going up in twos. And so this line here would be at three. So when simplifying ratio, it's very similar to uh, simplifying fractions, but instead of the same thing happening, or having to do the same thing to the top and bottom, you have to do the same thing to the left and right. So I'm going to start here by dividing both sides by 100. So I notice they both have two zeros at the end. So that will give me 10 here and 34 here. Now, these are both even numbers. So a nice easy next one to do is dividing by 2. And we get, um, was it 17? And 5 and 17, well, they're both prime numbers. And so there's nothing we can cancel them by so it's going to be our answer 5 to 17. So trying to describe the single transformation it kind of looks like it could be a rotation and it would be a rotation of 180 degrees but if it was a rotation it would be actually this way around and so it's not a rotation it looks to me like it's a reflection which it is. Now we've got to find out where we put our mirror line and our mirror line for this would be a horizontal line. So if I if I just guess and I put it down here, notice that B is only one jump away from that, and yet A is one, two, three jumps away from that. So that's not very good. That's not the halfway point. So we need this to be the halfway between the two um, shapes, which is going to be here. And the name of that line. Well, everywhere along that line, y is equal to minus 1. So we call it the y equals minus 1 line. So it's going to be a reflection across line y equals minus 1. So when you look at this graph, it looks like it's going down as well as up. So it goes down to start off with, and then it starts going up, but then it starts going down again. And when you're looking at trends, you're looking, generally speaking, what's happening with it. So if you kind of draw a line to represent roughly where the graph is going, that line is going to go up. So the general um, view on it, the general trend, is that it is increasing. So you can write general increase in emissions. To find the largest weight this package could have been before it was rounded, let's do a quick number line. And we're going to just do it between the 24 and what it would round to next. Well, it's to the nearest kilogram, so the next thing it would round to is 25. The cutoff point for rounding is here. And that's going to be halfway between 24 and 25, which is 24.5. And that is actually going to be our answer. Now, some of you who are astute might realize that 24.5 would round to 25. But theoretically, the biggest it can be is going to be 24.49 recurring. Let's just draw that a bit better. 24.49 recurring. And that is actually the same as 24.5. In your exam, however, you can write 24.49 recurring and you would get full marks. But for brevity, I would definitely recommend writing 24.5. So to find the area of a rectangle, we just multiply the width and the length. That's what we're going to do here. 
But whenever you have an expression representing a length or a width or, or anything really, you just put brackets around it. So we go u minus 2 times u plus 9. Okay, and the way we do this is with our grid. And I'm just going to draw out the grid. And so we've got u minus 2, and we're multiplying it by u plus 9. Don't want too many for some reason. And so we've got u times u, which is u squared u times minus 2, which is minus 2u, 9 times u, which is 9u, and 9 times minus 2, which is minus 18. And what we're going to do is we're just normally going to be able to add these ones together. So our answer will be u squared, and then we're going to do 9u plus minus 2u. Well, that's just going to be 9u take away 2u, which is 7u. So plus 7u, and then minus 18 at the end. There's an awful lot going on in this question. Whenever there's an awful lot going on, it's always best to draw a diagram. So we're going to start off at uh, Chelton, which is a C. Then we go to um, Bolko, that's where we're going. And we go through Devley on the way. So we'll do a D there. Uh, distance from Chelton to Devley is 34 miles. Distance from Devley to Bovlo is 16 miles. So I'm just reading through the question, adding it to my diagram. David leaves Chelton at 9 o'clock. Um, he drives to, from Chelton to Devley an average speed of 68 miles per hour. And what speed does David travel between Devley and Bolko to arrive at 9.45? So the whole duration of this the whole thing needs to be 45 minutes or 0.75 hours and the entire distance is uh, 34 plus 16 so that would be 50 miles okay now having a look at this we need to find out what time um, David was at Devley. So we're going to use our speed distance time triangle. So speed equals distance over time. And we're covering up the time because that's the one we want. So it's going to be time equals distance, which is 34, over speed, which is 68. So we're going to do 34 divided by 68, which is 0.5. So it would be 0.5 hours. So that would be half an hour. So we will be at uh, Devley at 9.30. So that means we've got 15 minutes left. Okay, So we've got 15 minutes to travel the 16 miles. So this time we're looking for the speed. Okay, so it would be speed equals the distance, which is 16 miles, over time, which is 15 minutes, but we need that in hours, so that would be 0 0.25 hours. And so what we can do here is times top one by 4 to get rid of the fraction. So it becomes uh, 64 over 1, or just 64 miles per hour. So the answer is 64 miles per hour. So in this question, we are told that the center of enlargement is at 6, 4. So let's just put across there. And what I'm going to do is just draw ray lines from the center of enlargement. And we're just going to go through each of the corners of our shape A. And we're going to just check whether it goes through the corner of shape B, which it does on this one. Let's just keep going. Yeah, it does on this one. But it does not on this one. So it says, find the uh, coordinate of the vertex of shape B that is not correct. So the, the coordinate is this one here. And so that would be minus 4, 
one. So the symbol here basically means and, and the way I remember it is if you draw that symbol and just put a line through it, you can make the word and. So we're looking at the probability of getting something that is in A and C. So the only ones that are in A and C are this 8 and this 9 here. So we're going to just add the 8 and the 9 together, which give us 17. Now we need to then work out how many numbers there are in total, so that's all of them. So 4 plus 8 plus 9 plus 5 plus 8 plus 3 plus 11 plus 6. So we need the total, which is 54. And then we get the 17, and we put that over the amount in total, so over 54. So I'm just going to write this out a little bit bigger, just so we've got a bit more room to play with. And I'm going to start by putting my tram lines in. Anytime it says solve, I always put my tram lines in. Um, we can start by either multiplying out the bracket, or we can be clever and just divide by 5's both sides. And that will leave 6x minus 39, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. Then I'm going to add the 39 to both sides. And so we've got 6x is greater than or equal to 39 plus 3, which would be 42. And then we're going to divide by 6 both sides. And we've got x is greater than or equal to 7. We know that when you multiply powers with the same base, and here we've got all these as base v, you add the powers. So we're actually looking at what do we add to 11, which is this one here, to get to the 15. 11 plus 4 is 15. So W therefore equals 4. So we're told that Y is directly proportional to X. And so the first thing I'm going to do is replace that proportionality sign with an equals. And to do that we need to introduce K. So y equals kx. So you just multiply the right-hand side by k. Then I'm going to substitute the values it's given us. So it says to us that when x is 5, y is 4.5. So when y is 4.5, and then we've got x is 5. Then I'm just going to quickly solve that, get my lines in, and divide both sides by 5. And so uh, that's going to be 0 0.9 equals k. So k is 0 0.9. So I go back to the equation. And instead of y equals kx, I know that y equals 0 0.9x. Now k is a constant, which means it will never change. So it's always going to be 0 0.9. So to find the value of x when y is 5.4, just going to replace y with 5.4. And it's just a matter of solving again. So get my lines in, and what I'm going to do is just divide both sides by the 0 0.9 to find out what x is. And when I do that, I find that x is 6. So to find the locus of points that are 10 centimeters away from a point, you need to measure 10 centimeters on a pair of compasses. And then you put the point at A and draw them. Now I'm going to try my best to do this. It's probably not going to look perfect, but I'll do my best. And the length here, which is supposed to be, probably isn't exactly, but this part here is going to be 10 centimeters to get the full marks. And obviously you want the circle to be a little bit nicer than, than the one I've drawn, but try and get it as perfect as you can and the best way of doing that is just don't push down too much and just move the page around with your compass being stationary so 7 times 10 to the power of 4 is going to be 7 and it's going to be 70,000 and 9 times 10 to the power of 7 will be 9, 90 million And so when you add them together, you get 
zero seven zero 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 zero. Now, if you have access to a calculator, if this is on the calculator paper, uh, then you can just type it into your calculator. Some people think there's a quick way of doing this, like adding the seven and the nine. There isn't. You've just got to work out what this number is, work out what this number is, and add them together. So I'm going to start just by writing out the equation. And I could put my lines in. Okay, we're asked to make uh, x the subject. So we're going to first of all add 10 to both sides. In fact, I'm just going to move all this over a little bit so I've got a bit more space. Okay, so we're left with m plus 10 on the left-hand side, and we've got 1 7th x on the right-hand side. Now, to get rid of the 1 7th, what I can do is just times both sides by 7. So, 7 brackets m plus 10 equals x. So x therefore would equal 7 brackets m plus 10 but it says expand your answer fully so we just go expand the brackets 7m plus 70 so we know that the um, exterior angle is equal to 360 divided by the amount of sides which we can just call n and something you can do is actually just swap these two things around and we can say that the n, the amount of sides, is 360 divided by the exterior angle for a regular polygon. So we just do 360 <clears throat> divided by 5, and that gives us 72. There's a lot going on with this question, so I'm going to start off just having a look at the um, total amount um, of money. And so I'm going to do this in pence, so 2115 pence. And if each merit point is worth 3 pence, then we can work out the amount of merit points by doing 2,115 divided by 3. So that gives us 705. So there's 705 merit points. Next, have a look at the question uh, here, this part here where it says James has X merit points. Uh, Sarah has four times as many points as James, so she's going to have 4X. Robert has 69 fewer merit points than James, so he's going to have X minus 69. And we know that that equals 705, because we've just worked that out. And this feels like a solving coming on. Uh, so we've got X plus 4X plus X, which is 6X. Minus 69 equals 705. And we're going to add 69 to both sides. So we've got 6x equals uh, 774. Then we're going to divide 6 both sides. And so we've got x equals 129. So x equals 129. That means James has 129. Sarah has four times more, so she will have 516. And Robert has 69 fewer, so we're going to take 69 away from that, and that will equal 60. When factorizing quadratic, and this is a quadratic, so we've got an x squared term, an x term, and a number term, what we need to do is we need to find numbers to put in two pairs of brackets. And to do that, we first of all look at the number on its own the 28, and the two numbers, well, we need to find two numbers that multiply together to make that 28. We also look at that minus 16, the coefficient of the x term, and we know that they've got to add together to make that minus 16. So something you can do is just quickly write down the factors of 28, and so that's going to be 1 and 28. Uh, 2 and 14, uh, 4 and 7. Now, they can actually both be negative as well. So minus 1 and minus 28 is still multiplied together to make my um, 28. Minus 2 and minus 14, and minus 4 and minus 7. 
but they need to add together to make 16. So we're going to check these to see which add together to make 16. So looking down the list, it's going to be these two here. Minus 2 plus minus 14 is minus 16. The first terms in our brackets are both going to be x, and we're just going to put the minus 2 in one of the brackets and the minus 14 in the other. When you have a fraction, it's just a fancy way of showing a divide. So this is x to the power of 11 divided by x to the power of 3. And indices rules say that when you divide two powers with the same base, you subtract the powers. So it becomes 11 take away 3. 11 take away 3 is 8. So that's x to the power of 8. So we're just going to substitute the values that we're given into the um, formula. So v squared equals, and then u is 16.4 squared plus 2 times a, which is 0 0.2, times s, which is 110.2. Type that into the calculator, and you get 313.039 uh, blah, blah, blah. And what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly solve this by square rooting both sides because it's v squared equals and we just want v equals. So v equals, and we're just going to square root that on the calculator, 17.692, blah, blah, blah. It says it wants it to two decimal places, so that's just going to be 17.69. So our triangle says that speed um, equals distance over time, and average speed is the total distance over the total time. So when we're looking for average speed, we want to work out, so we're just going to write average speed or speed, and it's going to be the total distance. So the distance starts at zero, goes up to 30. So the total distance is 30, and the time starts at 10.15 and ends at 11. So that'll be 45 minutes or, well, we should do it in hours, um, because the units we want in hours. So it would be 0 0.75. So 30 divided by 3 quarters would be 40. So it's going to be 40 kilometers per hour. So we're going to first of all convert the 11 liters into milliliters. So we're going to do 11 times 1,000, which would be 11,000. 11, okay, so we're going to just draw a line, like a number line. And we're going to have the 11,000 in the middle. Now, what would be the next one down if we're looking at to the nearest 10 mil? So we're going to add a 10 mil on, which will be 11,010. And we're going to take the uh, 10 mil away. So 11,000 take away 10 mil will be 10... Um, what is it? 9.90. Now when we're looking at limits, with the upper and lower part of it, we are looking at halfway points. So halfway here and halfway here. So this halfway point will be 10.995 and the next one will be 11.005. And that's the halfway points. And so that is going to be our upper and lower bound. And we just need to say that V can be anything above the 10,995 and including that. And it can be anything below uh, 11,005. But it can't include that because if it did, uh, if it was 11,005, it would have rounded up to 11,010. So this question is a simultaneous equations question. And so we're going to have to write down some equations. So it says two apples and three pears cost £3.80. So two apples, I'm going to call it A, A for the price of an apple, plus three pears, so 3P, cost £3.80. Now I'm going to do this as 380 just because it's easier to work with integers rather than decimals. And it says three apples, so 3A, plus 8 pairs cost £7.80 or 780 pence. 
Okay, so the first thing I do is try and get these numbers the same. So 3 and 8, um, they both go into 24. So I need to make them both 24. And what some people do is they just label this A and this B. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply everything in equation A by 8 so that this becomes 24. So it's going to become 8A. And so we go times the 2A by 8, which will be 16A plus 24P. And 380 times 8 is 3040. And we're going to do the same with B, but this time we're going to times it by 3. So we're going to have 3B. And we're just going through everything here and we're timesing it by 3. So 9A plus 24P, which is good. That's what we wanted. And 780 times 3 is 2340. So now we've got both of these the same coefficient. What we can do is we can eliminate going downwards. Now, if they are the same, the S in same is the S in subtract. If they were different signs, so if these weren't both positive, if one of them was negative, different, the D in different is the D in add. So here they are the same, so we are going to subtract. And we're going to subtract going downwards. So we're going to start off by doing, and I can just do a little line here to show what we're doing. So we're subtracting going downwards, and we're going to do 16a take away 9a, which will be 7a. 24p take away 24p, which is nothing, which is why we did that, is to eliminate them. And then 3040 take away 2340 will be 700. Then I can put my lines in. And all I need to do now is just divide both sides by 7. And I get A equals 100. So we know that apples cost 100, or one pound. We need to work out what pears cost. So I just need to pick one of the equations. I'm just going to pick this top one here. And I'm going to write it out. Instead of A, we know that A is a pound, or 100 pence. So plus 3P equals 380. So that's going to be 200 plus 3P is 380. And then again, I'm just going to draw my lines down. And we're going to subtract 200 from both sides. So it's going to be 3P equals 180. And then we're going to just divide by 3 both sides. And we've got P equals 60. So a pair costs 60. Now we can check this by using the other equation there. So 3 times 100 is 300, plus 8 lots of 60 is going to be, was that 480? So that's going to be 780. So we know that we've got it right. So the way this formula works is we have M, which is the final amount. Uh, the 2000 here is our initial amount. The um, decimal in here is our multiplier and the power here is the amount of years. So the way multipliers work is they are the percentage divided by 100. So if we go the other way and times it by 100 to make it back into a percentage, it will be 102.9%. Now it says what is the interest rate of the bank? Well the interest rate is always going to be 100%, well, this 102.9% is 100% plus the interest rate, which will equal the 102.9%. So the interest rate is going to be the 2.9%. You always start off with 100%. So if I put uh, a £5 into my bank, I've got 100% of that £5, and then the interest rate is on top of that 100%. So our answer here will be 2.9%. So the angle of elevation is when you are uh, looking horizontally, like here, it's the angle that you have to look up to see something, so that castle. So this is the angle of elevation here, which I'm just going to call X. And we've got a right angle triangle here where we have two lengths and we're looking for an angle, so we're going to be using trigonometry. So we're just going to label this up. So we've got the opposite here, adjacent to here. We don't need the hypotenuse at all, so get rid of that. 
let's just put our soccer tower in. So we've crossed out the hypotenuse, so it won't be sine or cos, it will be tan. So it'd be tan x is equal to the opposite, which is 49 over 98. Get our lines in. And we're going to do the inverse tan of both sides. And so the inverse tan of 49 over 98 is 26.565, etc. And it says it wants the nearest whole number, so that will be 27 degrees. There are a few different ways you could answer this question. I'm going to do it with a tree diagram, but you didn't need to draw a tree diagram to answer this question. So we've got our first tree, which is our first bus. And the choices are male and female. And we've got our second kind of branch, I suppose. And it's still male and female. And this is our second bus. So the property of male on a first bus is 9 over 15. And therefore, the property of female is. 1 minus 9 over 15, which would be 6 over 15. Male on the second bus is 7 over 15. And so female would be 8 over 15, because they need to add up to 1. And it's uh, independent, so these will be the same. And the question is basically asking, what is the probability that both will be female? So to have both female, we need to have gone down this line at the start and then this line again okay so looking at the fractions along the way it's 6 over 15 and 8 over 15 the word and in probability means times so whenever you're finding the probability of getting to an outcome so this outcome will be ff because they're both female you are multiplying the fractions that you go across so it would be 6 over 15 times 8 over 15 so 6 times 8 is 48 and times the bottoms uh, 15 times 15 is 225 now you can actually cancel that down um, so what you can do is you can divide top and bottom by 4 and that will give you uh, 16 uh, is it 4? no you can divide top and bottom by 3 and that would be 16 over 75. So either 48 over 225 or 16 over 75. So we've got a right angle triangle here and it involves two lengths and an angle. So we know we're going to be using trigonometry for this. I'm going to start by labelling the sides. So the one opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. Opposite the marked angle is the opposite. And the one between the right angle and the marked angle is the adjacent. Now notice the hypotenuse doesn't have a number or a letter next to it. So we just go cross it out. It's not interesting to us. Going to next do our trigonometry triangles. And the trigonometry triangles will have our saw, ka, toa in them. And we crossed out the h. So we're not going to be using saw or ka. We're going to be using toa. And TOA stands for tan the angle equals opposite over the adjacent. So we're going to tan the 81. And it's going to equal 2.4 over x. Get our solving lines in. Now what you can do here is we can times both sides by x and divide both sides by tan 81. Effectively what we're doing is just swapping these two around. So we end up with x equals 2.4 over tan 81. Now be careful here. When you type in tan or sine or cos, the calculator opens a set of brackets. So make sure you close them before you press the equals, sign, equals button. And when we do that, we get 0 0.380 blah, blah, blah. And round to two decimal places, that's 0 0.38. So this says, find the probability of A or B. 
Now A or B means it can be in A, it can be in B, or it can be in both. So we add the 5, the 3 and the 12 together, and that gives us 20, and put that over the total amount. So that is these three added together, which is 20, plus the one outside here, which is 30. 20 over 30 is the same as 2 over 3. We're asked to go from C to A, so starting here, ending here. Now, it would be nice if we can go straight there, but we don't know the name of that road. So we've got to go down roads that we know the name of. So instead of going straight there, we're going to go down this road and then up this road. So the first road is backwards down road B. So we call that minus B. And then the next road is backwards down um, A. So we call that minus A. And so we, our answer is either minus B, minus A, or more traditionally you put them in alphabetical order, so minus A, minus B. So we're going to first of all look at the starting section. So we've got the probability of a blue being picked from bag 1 is 7 over 11. So the probability for blue and red must equal 1. So what do we add to 7 to get to 11? Well, we add 4, and so it would be 4 over 11. So these two here must add up to 11 over 11, which is 1. Looking at the next section, we've got 11 over 15 chance of picking a blue. So what's the probability of picking a red? Again, 11 over 15 plus the probability of a red must equal 1. So that's going to be 4 over 15. 4 over 15 plus 11 over 15 is 1. And we've got the final section down here. Now, this final section, we haven't got any fractions for, but bag 2 is independent to bag 1. So bag 2 is just sitting there ready to be picked after we pick bag 1. So the probability is going to be exactly the same as the ones at the top. I'm going to first of all draw the two triangles out separately. And we've got A, B, C, and then A, D, E. And the first thing to notice is we have um, similar triangles here. And the way we know that is that we've got an F angle here, which means they're corresponding on the two parallel sides. So these two angles are the same exactly the same thing on this side we've got f angles so these two are corresponding and then the top angle is shared between the two triangles and when you've got two triangles with exactly the same angles they are going to be similar which means one's an enlargement of the other i'm just going to put on the length that we've got now we're looking for quite a complicated one we're looking for the length ce which is this one here now i can't actually label that onto my two triangles but what i do know is that CE is equal to AE minus AC. Now we know what AE is, which is 60. So we really, we just need to find out what AC is, this one here. And when we find out what AC is, we can just take them away to work out what the um, CE is. So we need two corresponding lengths that we know both of them. So we've got the 9 and 36 here. Because these two triangles are similar, we know that we can work out what the scale factor is. And to work out the scale factor, you do big divided by small, so 36 divided by 9, and we work out that that is going to be 4. So we know we're going to have a scale factor of 4. So to get from the smaller triangle to the big one, we times it by 4. But here we have the one we need to find out what this one is. The one corresponding is this one. We're going from the big to the small. And so to work out from the big to the small, we've got to divide it by the scale factor, so divide it by 4. So 60 divided by 4 is 15. So we know what this one is. So AC is 15. And so we're going to do AE, which is 60, take away the 15, and that will tell us what CE is, which is 45. So our answer is 45. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.